Hello, cat lovers. Welcome to Thursday's Q&A. This week's subject is cat technologies. We've received a lot of questions over the last two weeks about who we are and what technology we use. To answer these questions, we have to give you some context. The cat brand was newly created by the team that run operations for a global defense group. The R&D teams have existed for a long time, working on many global defense projects, developing intellectual property for enhanced products. Those projects have ranged from small arms, suppressor technologies, explosive devices, soldier systems, and platform products. Traditionally, the R&D teams around the world work with government suppliers or defense brands to create specific technologies. To establish an example for context, the U.S. R&D team could develop a suppressor technology for any U.S. company that exists today. A Surefire, a Silencer Co., Dead Air, TBAC, or any other manufacturer that wanted to create a new suppressor product could reach out via established relationships, and a new product could be conceptualized and developed by the R&D team. From there, that company would release the technology under their own brand name, with the market none the wiser. The R&D organizational structures were never designed to be built around a brand name the market would know or recognize. To this point, over the years, the R&D structures have changed their names and markings several times and continues to do so to protect its clients and products that the R&D teams have helped create. Consider the R&D team simply as a modern skunk works. Recently, however, the decision was made to provide the U.S. civilian market with a direct-to-consumer brand. One supported by the U.S. R&D team, ring fence from global R&D due to ITAR. CAT will launch with suppressor technologies and lab-engineered cleaners as first products, built from intellectual property such as Surge Bypass, which was created for elite programs. The reason for corporate secrecy surrounding the R&D teams is actually quite normal and standard in the global defense industry. For example, the majority of defense contractors will not publicly discuss or release information related to R&D projects underway with elite units. There are exceptions, especially when manufacturers want to promote their brands to sell civilian products, but this isn't necessary for CAT. CAT team understands that there is a general interest in who CAT is, who the industry faces of CAT are, and what projects CAT's R&D teams have been involved in previously. However, as CAT uses intellectual property developed originally for elite programs, this confidentiality does carry over to the civilian market. Therefore, R&D project names and the intellectual property will always remain confidential, and that won't ever change. CAT will not comment on how or why the technology was created or who uses it. The consumer will either need the Pew Sciences of the world or their own testing via friends to make a decision to purchase, as this is the way it should be. However, to assist the market with the tangibles that can be disclosed, CAT will share products with labs such as Pew Science so they can release their civilian data findings on CAT products and with companies like CGS to handle warranty, returns, and service. When it comes to suppressor technologies, the R and D team behind CAT have a very unique approach, as the majority of the group's R and D engineers and designers are not from the defense industry. The designing of suppressors has a technological basement or floor due to the nature of the product itself, the restrictions in the design due to the needs of the end user. Elite end users require a suppressor. CAT would rather use the term suppressor versus silencer as the products suppress a variety of factors versus just silencing sound to be as short, narrow, light, quiet, and durable as possible. And this becomes a binary set of core imperatives. This, however, creates greater issues for the R&D team, especially with suppressor models dealing with high caliber and automatic fire, as the pressures are significant. The holy grail of suppressor design is to have the smallest product with low back pressure, suppressed noise, sound, flash, and blast wave mitigation, all while remaining highly durable. The problem is doing all of this while keeping the size of the suppressor small. Due to the end user requests, the R&D team generally have restricted product sizes in which to work with to meet these end user expectations. Therefore, suppressors will always reach a minimal length and width by caliber if the suppressor is to retain the highest performance properties, as the R&D team simply don't have enough volume to slow pressure, 
noise, and mitigate flash if the suppressor is designed too short and narrow. The CAT R and D team work to solve these issues by pressure dynamics, material science, advanced simulation software, and highly complex direct metal laser melting, DMLS technologies, those capable of powder bed fusion under extreme heat conditions. Historically, Baffle technology was the preeminent design method to create suppressors, with materials such as steel, aluminum, and stainless steel being the preferred materials of construction. This technology has its strengths and minuses. The strengths are material availability, price, and the level of technology for a civilian consumer is generally high. The minuses with this type of design construction are two-sided, one technology and one use of materials. Baffle structures create micropressure systems or walls, easily seen under thermal imaging. This affects flow rates and creates additional heat buildup. The use of these metals requires welding, which can have issues from penetration and concentricity, and the machining methods restrict the ability to make complex components. Additionally, these metals do not always work well under extreme heat and pressure, so are more ideal for lower calibers and round counts. Today, the U.S. civilian suppressor market is able to receive CAT products that are highly complex in their ability to deal with the widest range of end-user performance criterias, but are made in a singular construction method. With DMLs, metallurgical powders, such as titanium and Inconel, along with other nickel-based powders can be used to create light but highly durable products. This does not mean a suppressor manufacturer is able to just use DML's print technology and make a superior suppressor as old technology printed by DMLs is still old technology, just in a different shell. We want to be extremely clear. Price point is very important to a lot of consumers, and unless the consumer has specific needs that are at the highest levels of operations, as long as the price versus quality and technology are fair, consumers should buy what they need, regardless of brand or technology. Can the U.S. civilian consumer now access high-performance, elite suppressor technology, the answer is yes. DMLS printing has a higher base cost than traditional suppressor construction, and DMLS printing machines are not constructed today for high commercial output. The question is, do U.S. civilian consumers actually need or want the high technology performance used by elite global teams for a more premium price? The civilian market has always wanted innovation for the lowest price. And the reality is that high-performance suppressor technology designed for elite end-users is expensive and only made in small volumes. As CAT enters the U.S. civilian suppressor market, CAT expects manufacturers to start moving in the technology direction of CAT and others in this space. But this only benefits the civilian market, and the team behind CAT are supportive of this growth potential for civilians. Civilians deserve to have price point categories. They should not be made to feel poorly for buying a $500 suppressor versus a $1,500 one. The needs of the civilian market should always be focused on product first, not brand. Consider it like elections. We should always be looking for the best candidate, not automatically on party lines. Therefore, moving forward, the U.S. civilian consumer has their own crossroad, whether to either enjoy lower technology, lower cost suppressor products, or move to high technology. Higher price suppressor products made with advanced intellectual properties that will require DML's printing. Neither is right or wrong. It is the consumer, not the manufacturer or distributor that decide on suppressor needs.